Welcome back to the Weekend Warrior Show Recap Podcast. I'm Ty from the Unemployed Architects. This week, I, I missed a, missed last week, so I got two weekends of shows to talk about. I have two weekends ago, I played at Door 4 Brewing on the Friday, and then the Saturday, I played at Christie's Place in Washington. And then this last weekend, I just had a couple of shows, The Cellar on Friday in Pontiac, and then... Uh, Cadillac Jacks on Saturday here in Bloomington. So not a lot of traveling this last weekend, which is kind of nice. But uh, so, uh, and you know, I'm a little late on posting this because I got I definitely got a little bit of a head cold this last week and was kind of not on my best, not not in my best state of mind, and just uh, kind of low energy and hard to get things done. Plus. Oh, I forgot. I picked up a show on Thursday at the local tap in El Paso. And that was like the day I was the sickest. That's what reminded me of that. So, uh, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Door 4 Brewing. This was a little bit of a weird show because the person who booked it no longer worked there anymore, I guess. And never told anybody about the show. And then this big, like, list of bands. And uh, I was... I'm there twice this month, so I'm there that week, that last time I played, and the 28th, and according to, you know, the booking emails and stuff that I had traded back and forth with, but then when I got there, nobody seemed to, uh, seemed to know I was supposed to play, uh, and it wasn't on the list, so it just wasn't communicated, but they were very, very cool about, uh, because uh, they said that, you know, there's just, just a miscommunication, and they're just uh, nice people over there so <clears throat> still played would have been a bummer if I would have drove you know the hour and I had this whole tire fiasco thing that happened where uh, my I've got got a slow leak in my back left tire and it was getting cut a little bit low nothing crazy but I was like oh, I'll go put air in it real quick and I was running a little bit later I was like oh it's a door four show so uh, you know I'll be I'll be just fine if, if I have less time to set up. But, I, you know, I was like, I'll save time. I'll get some, some air in the tire. I'll pay for it at Thornton's instead of go get the free air at Casey's. And so what happened was uh, I, I was on the other side of my car, so I wasn't looking at the gauges. And uh, I'd, you know, I'd set the what I wanted the tire pressure to be and everything. And I'm hearing it, like, check and click and check. And, uh, you know, after a little bit of doing it, I look at the gauges and I'm down to 17, which usually I think around 32 to 34 is kind of my ideal, uh, I think it's PSI, I don't, I don't know, about tire, air in the tire. And uh, so I'm down to 17, which is like over 10 less than where I was, to the point that my car was notifying me that I had a had low air pressure. Uh, you know, I'm getting ready to drive for an hour. So then I rush over to the Casey's. The Casey's uh, hose is broke. And, you know, I could have avoided a lot of this if I would have just pl planned better and prepared maybe in the afternoon, not like right when I was leaving. But I really didn't notice it was the, the, the tire pressure I just thought about on the way out of town. Anyway, it could, could have been avoided. But, of course, it's not, not how I roll, I guess. And... Uh, got to the Casey's and there were holes in the hose but it kind of worked so that was uh I spent just trying to get it back to kind of where it was you know which is like I think 12 higher took about almost 20 minutes to, <laughs> to get it to maybe 15 I'm probably exaggerating it felt like forever crouched down like and then it doesn't have the gauge built in and I didn't want to grab my gauge so I was using my uh the internal one in the car and just like standing up and looking and getting back down and standing up and looking and trying to get the hose just right. So that put me in kind of a funk just from the beginning. And then I got there about 40 minutes till I played and then they, they uh, weren't positive I was supposed to play. They definitely didn't have any uh, idea. And so uh, and there was there was this thing going on there. It was like a kind of a potluck type feel. It looked like some sort of reunion or something. And I was like, uh, not real sure how it was going to turn out. But, you know, I got in there. I set up as fast as I could. I didn't go crazy with, you know, the, the stage as much as I might normally. I didn't use, like, a monitor either. I just used my, my little JBL stack. And it really sounded pretty good. Uh, it was kind of weird. They left the lights on the whole time so people could 
kind of, you know, see what they were. And I mean, I even went back and it's like, you know, usually the, we, we would uh, turn the lights on, but if you, or turn the lights down, but if you, you know, I know there's a lot of people here eating. If you don't want to do it, don't worry about it at all. No, no big deal. But it did did add, not, you know, not the ideal atmosphere maybe to consume music. But because of all that, I was pretty nervous and I ended up just doing like song after song after song because I decided that the name of the game that night was going to be to, you know, make these people that were there happy and, uh, you know, just play like every pop cover song you know, rock, pop, whatever, but all the covers that I could do, and I just did medley after medley, just trying to keep them there, and I ended up and got them there the whole time, and, you know, I was pretty worn out, but, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I don't know whether it was my nerves, or I was just kind of in the groove, I didn't give people time to really think too much between songs, I mean, after, you know, some of my medleys are just a couple songs, some of them are up to, like, 12, I think, and, uh, so, you know, after the medley, I would end up and give give people a second while I tuned or changed my capo or whatever I needed to do. But uh, I just kept going and going and going. And it was pretty fun. It was a pretty fun night. It was, it was hard work, but the crowd was dancing by the end. There were some kids there dancing, and it was, it was a good time. And then, uh, so... Uh, Saturday, which that's only a two-hour set, which is pretty, you know straightforward for me especially with doing mostly covers and medleys and all that i can knock that out pretty easy but the one f saturday at, in washington was uh, christie's place and it was just you know that's a four hour set and i got there really early i decided to take my camera with me and maybe get some i've been trying to share videos like crazy little clips of me playing live so i mean if you're paying attention you might notice that you're seeing a lot more of that but uh trying to be more on top of the social media with the posting with the, you know the stuff i can do kind of uh but anyway uh so i was like this this might make for a cool video i could kind of do the setup uh, of of a show and just like have it kind of watch and fast forward through it and maybe even explain it i don't really know the last one i did with the guitar restring didn't really you know, work as well as I was hoping, but anyway, uh, this was kind of a similar idea, and then I was like, oh, well, I have the camera, I may as well just get some footage too, and maybe I can clip that out, put some new clips up, but, and that's pretty much what the night turned into, was just trying to get get some good, good clips, uh, to, to share, because there wasn't a lot of crowd interaction, that's for sure, uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know if that's my fault, or, uh, the, the, the bar and I seem to think that, you know, it was just kind of an off weekend in general. And, uh, you know, there's like a full moon that weekend. Maybe that had something to do with it. I'm not very superstitious, but it just seemed like people weren't... I th there was a couple big games on the, the TV as well, you know, so people were really into... I think there was some baseball playing and stuff, so they were really, you know, paying attention to that more so than what was going on and it wasn't like there was a ton of people but there were some that were mildly entertained i hope and i think <laughs> but uh it, it was a long night but it was fine i had a good time uh just kind of focusing on trying to get some good clips and i played a lot more guitar than i had in a while just kind of extended a lot of songs and uh trying to do more of the lead stuff and just see what i can get away with pretty much and uh, I, I did a lot of that and that was fun <clears throat> So, long night ultimately, but it, it was it was pretty good. Uh, I think the next time, hopefully it'll be even a little better. And uh, then fast forward. Oh, that so I just started noticing I was sick on like uh, Tuesday last week. It's like ah, I just don't feel right. And then Wednesday I was like extra tired and congested. And I mean, you could probably still hear it in my voice. So I was like, uh oh, this is gonna be rough. Um, you know, it didn't feel like COVID. I had COVID before, so it didn't, didn't really have the same effect or anything. It was just kind of like a head cold, and I was a little more tired. And uh, I don't really have the option to cancel shows, and I uh, don't like doing that anyway. You know, I, if I can sing at all, you know, I could probably figure out a way to uh, make it happen. And, you know, if my voice is completely gone, obviously, there's nothing I can really do. But if I, if I got a little something, you know, I can kind of 
make something happen. Like I have a whole separate set list kind of for the days where my voice isn't quite feeling it. So uh, somebody hit me up on a Wednesday night to play Thursday at the, uh, the local tap and uh, the, the owner over there. And uh, so, you know, I could have used the money ultimately and uh, I could have practiced that, that night. I'd already practiced and it went okay. It wasn't like... I didn't have full control, but you know, I had enough to play some easy tunes and a three hour set and it was just acoustic. So I was like, yeah, I can handle that, no problem. Uh, I'm, I did, however, make the mistake of drinking cough medicine like almost right before, like less than a half hour before I played. And it just like weirdly dried out my voice for the whole first set. And I ended up playing like an hour 15. And every easy song was hard. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure I had weird squeaks and cracks throughout the way, throughout the way. And it just, you know, it just really wasn't co cooperating with me. I should have should have made some tea or something and had that on hand because that might have helped. But anyway, so I just kept playing, kept playing, tried to pick easy songs to sing, get through them. They were all super rough, in my opinion. Uh, the bar said they didn't really notice or anything, but, you know, would they even say that they did? I, I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so I ended up and, you know, took a little break, drank a bunch of water, uh, kind of rested my voice for a second, and that second round, like... Not that it was perfect, it definitely was not perfect, but it was like, you know, significantly better. So I got into kind of some more fun stuff and I seemed like, it seemed like the crowd was, you know, it was it's a very tiny place in El Paso. They have a really nice big beer garden, but the indoor, that's why I just did acoustic because I didn't want to blow anybody away. And I felt like I kept my volume, you know, super low, which is pretty easy to do when you're worried about how, how your voice sounds. You don't want to crack, crack, a high note like really loud and somebody I'd rather crack a high note when I'm you know very quiet so it's even harder to hear <laughs> but you know it's still just me and an acoustic guitar so it's pretty bare ultimately but uh, at that second set I, I kind of you could tell I lit up a little bit because I had a little bit more control over what my voice was doing and uh, played some more fun songs and started getting you know the crowd started getting into it a little bit more so it was good I mean it wasn't wasn't you know it's it's weird when you're sick because it's like you always think like if if I was sick you know I would have killed it so much harder because I would have had so much control but I don't know that that's the case you know it's just what you assume I guess because you're not at full capability so that was probably the worst one with this with me being sick the Friday one uh, it was rough, but I had some support. Good uh, old-time friend, uh, Joey Monahan. I used to play shows with him in Bloomington like way back in the day over at Blue Room and stuff. So I think Main Street and Main Street Grill and Blue Room and some other places. But uh, so he, he, I had seen him at one of my shows a while back at a, like a house party. And, uh, you know, I was like, if you want to come and play some tunes, definitely do it. And he got a hold of me and was into it. So he got up and played some tunes, which gave me a little bit of relief, which was nice. Because that first set was, you know, it wasn't as bad as the previous night. But it was still a little rough to get the vocals kind of warm. And then it's just like, it's so weird because you try to hit certain notes that are in your muscle memory. And it just, like, does not work. <laughs> so that, uh, that can be weird. Uh, it's like, well... That's, that's the way it always feels when I sing that note, and in this specific time, it feels different. But, um, but yeah, and then it uh, wasn't super busy, but it was there was people there, and then a little crew of some some Pontiac people that uh, I'm always happy to see came through, and they were into it and very generous, and it was fun. They they had a good time. I also covered a buddy of mine. Uh, if, pay attention to the podcast i'm sure you know ryan wolf because i talk about him a good amount fellow musician good friend and um he had been he'd asked me a while ago like if i was going to cover one of his songs which one it would be and uh ask if i'd be interested in maybe trying to learn one uh to put out around the time of his uh album release which is out now by the way so if uh if you know ryan or you would like to know ryan just look up ryan edward wolf on spotify and uh check out uh, no place to be it's his uh album that just came out R really solid in my opinion uh and very just 
courageous because it's just his voice and an acoustic guitar and it's exactly how he sounds not hidden behind anything and it's very honest uh but and and the tunes are catchy so they're good on a lot of levels but the one i had have been kind of working on was the a song called wishes of his that i really like and uh which you know almost didn't make the album a bunch of times when he was recording it but i kept saying you gotta get that wishes song on there but uh anyway so i the the crew that was were there and um in you know kind of nice uh film, let me uh, do a facebook live with one of their phones and they helped me out to film it and i you know if you saw i posted a, a part of the cover because i didn't really finish it too strong but uh anyway so that that was kind of a cool thing that happened that i was excited that you know some nights i wouldn't be confident enough to even try that uh just because i mean i've never played it live before and i've only practiced it for like a few weeks but <clears throat> uh you know ho hopefully there'll be a cool version of that that i cover out in the next month or two uh so that was Friday, Saturday was Cadillac Jacks. It was the same night as Homecoming in Bloomington, so my expectations were very low. I had uh, local support, a guy I'd seen play pretty recently, uh, Dylan Carriker, at a different show I had, and uh, I asked him if he'd want to open, because I thought, you know, it'd be a good experience for him, and possibly bring out a couple extra people, and uh, a buddy of mine, Fred Snellen, came out later that night, too, so he, I let him play a song as well, and he did a really nice job, but uh, yeah, so I got there pretty early, it was like an hour, hour and a half, and then I did a very elaborate <laughs> setup because I ended up and just had uh, Dylan use my extra JBL stack uh, as his PA, and then I did all the crazy things I do with mine, and then I used a Yamaha, my Yamaha as an extension speaker, the, the, the little 10 inch. Uh, and because uh, sometimes when I play there, it's like not loud enough, I feel like, because they like like real rock bands. And uh, yeah, so Dylan opened up. It, I feel like the stage looked pretty intense because I spent a lot of time on the lights and they have some interesting lights of their own going on. So that was kind of cool, different feel. And then uh, uh, what else? Oh, Dylan. Dylan uh, he played some of my favorite tunes in that first set that he's been covering and then uh i played i felt like i sounded pretty solid honestly i mean as a given circumstance i actually remember to make tea and whatnot this night and uh i've been trying to hydrate all day and so yeah it felt pretty good and uh, i was i was kind of surprised honestly but wasn't you know wasn't 100 percent, wasn't full potential but when is it you know so i just kind of embraced the weirdness a little bit more than i had because i had just a little bit more control and uh kept it upbeat all night played some originals some covers uh dylan played a second set which i thought he did a really nice job with uh he, he did a cover i like that i went up there and kind of sang some backup for which was uh, the rolling stones uh i can't remember what the title of the song is off offhand but pleased to meet you i think but it's not the real name that's the parenthesis name or so, i don't remember but uh so yeah and then it got a little busier it was never packed but i feel like i had the, the crowd singing along with me at a certain point and kind of had some people up there dancing and it was yeah it was a good show and i just felt like pretty sharp on my guitar playing and uh, i even had a guy one of the audience members came up and uh asked if i would play one of my originals a second time which i don't know that might have been a first that they're like they liked it so much the first time that they uh would uh want to hear it again later in the night so that was pretty cool he did say he thought that it might be better if I slowed it down a little, but, you know, I wasn't feeling the slow, the slow play, I guess. I was uh, feeling it in general, so I was trying to, and Cadillac Jacks has always been a, like, they've actually said things like, let's let's try to keep the, the songs as upbeat as possible, so, you know, I always keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, and, I don't know, my originals went pretty good, my covers went pretty good. Uh, Dylan, I feel like sounded pretty solid, uh, especially the second set. And then Fred, uh, he did one song, and I've heard him do it before. And, and like the first first part of it was like the best ever. It's the um, 
Lightning Crashes, I think, by, what is that band? It's something like a very general word, but I can't remember the the name. But anyway, he, he there's this vocal run in it that's really hard, and I think he hit it like the best he'd ever hit it that I'd heard. So that was pretty cool to see it and hear it, you know. Uh, and he was playing a half step up from because he usually does a half step down i guess so even more impressive i guess uh and uh yeah the night ended pretty good i did everything went about as good as it could i was not excited about the teardown though <laughs> because it's just you know two whole pa systems pretty much and uh my mind super elaborate plus all the lights and it just was a a chore and it was the third week or the third day in a row of playing shows and uh i was sick so all of this all of those things combined made me tear down it probably took me almost probably an hour and a half really to get done with that and get it loaded in the car and then sunday which didn't turn out to be super ideal because i still still getting over it i still don't you know i'm not quite wholly healthy and uh but i had recording time booked and i had a good chunk uh and I think I finally got the State and Water live album completely done. So now I just have to kind of work. I've listened to all of them, and I think I got them all where I want them. And now I just have to really work on, you know, uploading them and deciding. Because I did two whole different mixes. I did the video mixes where I made sure you could hear the kick drum on, like, phone speakers, computer speakers. And then I did, like, the audio-only mix, which uh, is a little little bit uh, rounder kick drum and you know maybe a little bit louder but a little bit uh wider and just uh not not as clicky so uh because i i don't enjoy clicky kick drum most of the time and uh so all that stuff i think is just going to be like a week until i can upload it and then probably two months till it's out out but uh, i've been working on the videos as well and you know hoping to get those done by the end of november and uh, so that's exciting and then what we spent the most time on was the magic song that i just wrote and got in the studio and got out pretty far on it it's not done but uh, i had more stuff on the state and water than i was hoping but that being said i mean it's pretty much right there and i'm going in wednesday to do a couple little more things in the morning at 11 so I'm really hoping to have like an almost polished, almost done version of it uh, by then. So that is uh, exciting. And then that'll come out, you know, probably two months after the state and water thing. And uh, hopefully by then, uh, De Jeff Easton, the guy who recorded uh, Art or Art Mandalay EP and Design to Shine full length album, hit me up about being interested in maybe trying to record another song so hopefully i'll be working on that simultaneously as uh you know we get the the full arrangement on uh one of my new tunes like uh at the at eclipse because the magic song is pretty broken down the one i'm gonna do with jess is probably gonna be pretty broken down so quick turnarounds i think the the song wings that i'm gonna be doing with eric at eclipse is going to you know, be a little bit more elaborate, take a little bit longer, but uh, I'm excited. So hopefully you are too. But anyway, that's about all that's going on. I got, I do have a show tomorrow night, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes because it's been a, been a little wild about getting it in the books and everything. But uh, tried to change the date on me too, and then it's supposed to be bad weather, so they moved it indoor to a different location and. I'm still sick a little bit, so it'll just be kind of wild to see how everything turns out. But I really need that show, so, so I'm very thankful to have gotten that. And uh, hopefully my cold will be all but over by then, but we'll see. Anyway, I appreciate anybody who takes the time to listen, and I will talk to you next time. Have a good one. Bye.